So, so that is the reason I decided uh, to you know, continue with the classes. And today we are going to do chapter five, that is leadership and direct social work practice. So we have completed four chapters in the previous classes. I understand that there are some students who have newly joined in, uh, but for those who are yet to understand what's happening because uh, I mean, you're newly admitted to the class. So the first chapter, we have finished the first chapter which dealt with leadership, the types of leadership, the models that we discussed there, that was the introductory chapter. Then in chapter two, I just put it in the message as well. Chapter two, oh, we spoke about professional turfs in social service and human service organizations. Chapter three, we dealt with self-leadership and distributed leadership in social service sector. Chapter four, we spoke about social work management and the role of social work manager. And today we are going to talk about leadership and direct social work practice. Apart from that, one assignment uh, is already given, the due date has already lapsed. Uh, whoever has joined newly can get in touch with me. I would extend the, um, the date for you. And uh, or we, would, we can do like this. All those who have, uh, you know, have been newly admitted to the course can submit the assignment, both the assignments together rather, that is before the the due date which is there i guess it's on the 5th of september 5th or 8th of september so you can complete that both the assignments you can submit together this is only for those who are newly admitted to the course um we're coming back to this to the lessons uh today's chapter again is a very easy chapter Okay, now you know what is leadership. We spoke about the models. We spoke about the role of social work manager and so on. And we spoke about leadership and, uh, you know, um, self-leadership, distributed leadership in social service sector and so on. And we spoke about professional turfs as well in the social service sector. So today we will exclusively deal with leadership and direct social work practice. Now, Social work practice as a whole, if you think about it as a subject or as a profession, no, it is normally categorized broadly into three. They say there is direct social work practice, then there is indirect social work practice, okay? And then there is clinical social work practice. Now, direct social work practice is also called as micro level practice. Indirect social work practice is also called as macro level practice because it's at a broader scale and clinical social work practice. Now, what is this direct social work practice? Now, direct social work practice, of course, we'll discuss it in the other slides. Uh, okay, I'll get back to the messages towards the end of the class. Uh, so direct social work practice. Now, what is direct social work practice? See, the name itself suggests, that means, the social worker is in direct contact with the client or the victim, whoever it is, or the client. So there is a direct approach and the social worker is directly interacting with the victim or the subject in question. Are you understanding me? So the name itself suggests direct social work practice where they are directly involved. And so it's called as a micro level practice. They are directly involved on the field. It's like, you know, direct interaction. So that's how they call them as uh, direct social work practitioners. Next is indirect social work practice. That's of course the opposite of that. In the sense, it is at the next level where there are other people involved in the social service scheme and these are basically 
who are not directly in touch with the subject, uh, you know, the subject of social work in the sense the say, for example, the victim, they're not directly interacting with them, probably they are just working behind the curtains. Like, for example, you have accountants in a so the social service organization. Then you have, uh, you know, different professionals, chartered accountants or, you know, accountants, the finance team, the legal team. So all these people are working behind the scenes. So, you know, or the human resources team, all these people work behind the scenes. So this is indirect social work practice. This is an example for you. The other one is clinical social work practice. Again, as the name suggests, clinical. Clinical, that means something pertaining to, uh, you know, the person's health, uh, psychological health, or whether the person, you know, deals with the psychological aspect or, you know, the overall well-being of a person. So that's something called as clinical social work practice. So just to set the perspective and you know, really understand what kind of leadership is actually expected in direct social work practice. So to set the perspective, we'll discuss all the three you know, categories of social work practice, that is a direct or micro level practice, indirect or macro level, as well as clinical social work practice. Uh, as the slide says, direct social work practice or micro level practice is at the heart of social work practice where it implies a direct interaction with the respondent victims in the field or the area of work. That means here there is a direct contact with the client and the community assistance or programs are devised and implemented. So it is thereby eclectic and extensive in nature. That means it's wide in nature. And the splendor or the beauty of this practice is seen in the ability of the social worker to take the lead and devise the right assistance program out of the device or out of the diverse options available and implemented. So the beauty, what is the beauty in this entire uh, direct social work practice? The beauty of it is, or the splendor of it is, or the striking feature rather, or the striking characteristic of direct social work practice is seen in the ability or the capability of the social worker to take the lead and devise or you say charter or prepare the right assistance program. He charts out or she charts out the right assistance program out of the diverse options available, out of multiple options that are available. They pick the right assistance program and provide it to the client, victim, respondent, or whoever is the subject matter of that particular, you know, assistance program, and then they implement it. So again, I'm reiterating, direct social work practice is at a micro level. However, it is in fact eclectic or extensive in nature. And the, the striking feature of this practice is seen in the ability or the cap or is reflected in the capability of the social worker to take the lead and devise the right assistance program out of the multiple options that are available and then they implement it next is indirect social work practice which is at a macro level it's also called as macro level practice and this is a form of practice that reflects an organizational structure with different departmental rungs, that is categories that revolve around the primary or the core department, which is the social work department. So obviously of any social work organization, the core department or the base department is the social work department. There has to be other supporting departments like, as I said earlier, the accounts department, the HR department, then you have the legal department. So the other allied departments that are there that are supporting the social work department. So they are also, of course, important departments 
and they all coordinate with one another and help to enforce the charter of the organization and support the social structure program, social service structure programs, whatever is devised by the social service organization. Now, the people who are there in the social service organization who are not directly on the field, for example, so they can be considered as indirect social work practitioners because they are normally involved in structuring social service programs. And it, it is normally done by people in the structure and that program is practically implemented by the direct social work practitioners. So this is an example for you. So the next type is clinical social work practice. Again, as the name itself suggests, clinical social work practice or clinical social service. It is something that is related to the overall well-being and health of an individual or the victim with, uh, you know, the victim or the subject. So clinical social work practice is a pervasive, systematic approach that caters to clients or the subjects who are clinically ill or are suffering from psychiatric disorders, for example, and diagnosable emotional problems as a result of some trauma in their life. For example, you have rape victims, or there are child abuse victims of, you know, victims of forced prostitution, et cetera. So it has, you know, kind of a psycho, they sometimes have the psychological imbalance and sometimes are, you know, they suffer from psychiatric disorders as well. So such kind of victims are normally, you know, the problems of such victims are addressed by clinical social workers. So these clinical social workers assist in psychotherapeutic sessions as well with patients, or even they help with diagnosis when the subject is admitted to an inpatient cell. It could be a hospital or a charitable hospital or even a clinical setup, which is established for such victims. You know, sometimes even you see, um, you know, drug addicts, there are, you know, drug cells which are there. So there may be social service organization which may help drug addicts. This is yet another example. So here the social workers work directly with the client or the victim, just like in the direct social work practice. But the key distinction or the, the key difference between clinical social work and direct social work is that clinical social workers focus predominantly on the overall health, physical, mental, and psychological well-being of the subject victim in the case that they are handling. So the primary focus is on the overall health, the physical, mental, and psychological well-being of the victim in the case that they are handling. So as a conclusion, rightly, author W.P. Sullivan in his book, Leadership in Social Work, opines that social work is a mission-driven and a value-based profession. So he says that social work is a mission-driven and a value-based profession. And directly, let's move into um, the topic of leadership in direct social work practice. So now, leadership in social direct social work practice, as you said, the workers, social workers are directly in touch with the subjects, or with the victims, or with you know whatever they are handling. So. So the leadership that is, what kind of leadership is reflected in direct social work practice? So you can see when you talk about leadership, of course, you learned about different leadership styles. You, we learned about authoritarian leadership style or autocratic. We spoke about, I remember, participative leadership or democratic leadership. Um, we spoke about delegative leadership, laissez-faire. We spoke about transformational, transactional, and so on, and authoritarian you know, and so on, different types of leadership. Now, what kind of leadership is normally uh, reflected in direct social work practice? Now, this is, a, a, it, this is kind of a tricky question. There is uh, not an easy answer in the sense, you, you cannot really say that, you know, there is one kind of leadership skill that is required or this kind of a model that can be used in this particular practice. Normally, it could be seen as an amalgamation of all the other types of leadership 
or you know uh, all the types of leadership uh, you know skills or the models that are reflected in you know in practice actually in direct social work practice you cannot really pinpoint and say this type is actually required or that type is required but obviously you know whoever takes the lead they normally tailor themselves to whatever is the need and then they take the lead accordingly and what is more important is the program gets implemented so leadership skills actually are embedded in the routine management, supervision, and implementation of social work programs, which are part of direct social work practice. So that means it is, you know, integrated in the routine management, supervision, and implementation of social work programs. Now, a direct social work practice involves direct involvement with the client. That's what we understood. And the imposition here is of devising a tailored program to address the needs of the subject victim. So he takes the lead and devises a tailored program as per the problem of the person or the victim that they are trying to address. They take the lead, they see through the available resources and programs, that is, they, they see it in the sense they um, you know, pick the right option out of all the other available resources and programs and see what is fitting and then take the right move in the right direction and that of course calls for you know leadership skills in a social worker now the social worker also elicits information from the subject or say for example the victim and the subject or the victim sometimes it depends on what is the case, divulges all relevant information. That means the social worker sits and talks with the victim and then tries to find out what is the story behind, you know, whatever problem that person is facing. So they elicit information, they gather information, they request and gather information from the subject. And the subject, that is the victim, uh, he or she, they release that information in the course of conversation as they are persuaded by the social worker, they divulge all relevant information, they, you know, expose or release out any relevant information. So this enables the social worker to strategize the right solutions for the problem faced by the victim or the subject. So you see the role of the social worker is where they are patient, uh, you know, and they try to elicit information, they persuade the person, uh, the subject or the victim, whatever as the case may be, to, to you know, reveal additional information. And that helps the social worker to devise or to charter or to plan the right assistance program, you know, in the best interest of the victim or in the best interest of the subject that they're dealing with. Now, often as it may not be always palpably clear that social worker may be distracted sometimes, it may not be always obvious, that's what we are trying to say here, that it may not be always obvious, it's not necessary that it is always seen that the social worker may be distracted by certain constraints or certain impediments or certain hurdles or certain limitations. Constraints means, uh, I'm trying to give you different words here, constraints or hurdles or impediments or limitations these are the meanings, distracted by certain constraints, certain limitations in providing solution to the subject or in providing solution to uh, providing solution to the, uh, you know, to the victim. So such constraints include threats. Sometimes if you have observed, you must have heard of a lot of instances where sometimes a social worker uh, you know, goes to the fore and does everything possible to help, for example, any community or a family or an individual. And sometimes they are threatened by the other family members. Uh, they may be intimidated. They may, they may sometimes be also death calls, 
and you know the such kind of things happen where the social worker would be discouraged from helping a particular victim so such constraints can be in the form of threat intimidation uh, which is actually you know it is advised that it may be set aside and legitimately dealt with legitimately dealt with in the sense it has to be properly dealt with the help of the law in a proper manner in a legitimate manner that means in a legal manner by not taking law in your hands by following the law if there are any goons who are trying to intimidate so you will have to inform the police or take the help of the police and then address the issue and then try to you know carry on with the social work so it depends sometimes there can be different constraints in the form of political influences sometimes like you know there are different uh, uh, you know there are different stories across the globe i can talk about there are different things that are coming to my mind for example uh, like you know i wouldn't go really because in depth of the example what i'm trying to give you because examples say in india there are um, certain groups okay in some parts of the country or in a particular region rather where uh, you know if a lady she becomes a widow so she is shunned by the society and she is not allowed to interact and then it happens normally in villages in specifically a particular a small pocket of india it's not throughout the country of course in a small pocket in a small area and then when they try to when there are social workers who try to support the female and uh, even sometimes encourage her to get remarried and so on but you know there are the other village elders who will you know discourage her and would you know really put up a battle against the social worker and sometimes it leads to you know a lot of intimidation that is really thrown upon the social worker threats they sometimes there are death calls and so on so there are different instances different cases sometimes there are even this um, i mean different different examples are there so th these kind of pro problems sometimes can be or it can pose as a limitation or a constraint or an impediment or a hurdle in the social work practice but how does a social worker deal with it you deal with it by taking the help of the law or by taking the help of the police and and so on of course when you're part of a social work structure so there has to be support because it has to be legitimately dealt with by not taking law in your own hands so this is one aspect next is a social worker in direct practice maybe maybe the lead in certain instances that involve criminal cases that may be registered against the perpetrator of the crime that is the one who has committed the offense uh that is perpetrator of the crime crime inflicted upon the subject victim so in such a situation the social worker will act as an aid in soliciting or requesting information from the victim prepare reports and aid in subjecting the victim to medical examination gather reports etc to be produced before the relevant adjudicatory body or the court so such intervention in proactive case management is again yet another lead role that the social worker may have to play are you understanding me let me take your attendance uh, before it gets disconnected just a moment please i'll just take a snapshot of all those who are present Okay. So I'm I'm sure you understand this point where the social worker you know helps in the advancement of justice or in advancing justice to the victim. Like again, for example, suppose there is um, a victim of domestic violence. For example, there is say uh, a lady who is you know um, you know subject to domestic violence. and she is really beaten up by the family or she there there has been attempt to burn her so such 
kind of cases are plenty. So, you know, especially in rural areas. So where, say for example, there is a lady and she's been subjected to domestic violence and there is a social worker who goes to the aid of this woman. So then it of course becomes a criminal case. Domestic violence is a you know, criminal case in most jurisdictions of the world. So, and in most countries, it is incorporated in the criminal laws. For example, it is an offense under the, you know, in the criminal laws of India. For example, it is an offense even here in UAE. Of course, in most jurisdictions, it is an offense. Domestic violence is seen as a crime. So, so what is the role of the social worker here? The social worker, of course, sees that the domestic uh, the, the subject victim against whom it is perpetrated who is a victim of domestic violence they will cater to her psychological problems in case it has affected her mind and then they will try to elicit information gather evidence against against whoever is uh, you know torturing her or troubling her and they gather information they gather you know prepare reports and they produce it before the relevant courts or relevant adjudicatory bodies or the relevant courts of appropriate jurisdiction for appropriate action to be taken against the perpetrator of crime or against the you know the offenders the ones who commit the offense so this is again another role where the social worker takes the lead uh, and the social workers intervention in proactive case management again is another lead role that the 